All right, Acts chapter 4, Peter and John before the council. Acts chapter 4, verse 1. As they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about 5,000. Does that mean 5,000 Eve? Um, <clears throat> so, a lot of people gather around them while they're preaching, and some people were grieved by it, and so they held on to them, um, put them in hold to the next day. They laid hands on them. So, when I read that, it makes me think that, you know, the people that disagreed with them, um, didn't let them leave, basically, because they, uh, wanted to get them in trouble or something. I don't know. And they, uh, it, it's interesting with the laid hands on them. Uh, because, you know, it talks about laying on of hands to, um, ordain ministers, basically, later on. And so, this is like a different kind of laying on of hands. But, uh, anyway... And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Cephas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? And Peter filled with, then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Uh, Peter Phil. Okay. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of your, you builders, which is become the head of the corner. And so I think, you know, he's referencing scripture when he says that about the chief cornerstone or the cornerstone being rejected by them. Neither is there salvation in any other for their name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's another popular verse. Salvation only comes through Jesus. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing by them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them, is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in, in this name. And, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. So a lot of people heard the, what they were saying and saw the, the miracles and they believed, but there were still some that, that didn't. But it was even hard, it was hard for the ones that didn't to, um, to deny it or to tell the, the people otherwise who believed. So they thought, you know, the only thing they could do was tell them not to do it anymore. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, 
whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye. So I think, I think there, that sounds kind of interesting reading that, but I think uh, they're saying, you know, should we listen to you or should we listen to God? What do you think? And, you know, basically, rhetorically, you know, they should follow God. Acts 4.20 says, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above forty years old, on whom of this miracle healing was shewed. And that's interesting. What's what's the point of pointing that out? That he was forty years old, the guy that they healed. He's a full-grown man. I don't know. But, uh, and so it's interesting, too. They thought that, you know, John and Peter were unlearned men and, uh, you know, maybe not very well educated or something, but the way that they were speaking was eloquently. Or, you know, the knowledge that they had, you know, was, uh, was beyond what they think they thought that it should be. And, uh, it was from, you know, the Holy Ghost speaking through them. And it talked about the fill, being filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, and he spake again. So again, we see, you know, the filling of the Holy Ghost has to do with prophesying or preaching. And uh, <clears throat> so that's there too. And so next, the believers pray for boldness, Acts 4.23, and being let go, they went to their own company. And reported that all the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, but both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. So again, they filled with the Holy Ghost, being able to speak with boldness, and uh, I think that uh, this is a prayer that probably all of us have prayed similar prayers too, and maybe not the same circumstances. Maybe I just sometimes we might have to get over, you know, rejection or embarrassment or something like that. You know, when we walk up to people or we, you know, we want to give them the gospel, and you know, I've prayed for boldness to speak to people about Jesus and uh you know and and we pray for the boldness of others too and you know maybe we're not being so persecuted um, in America and other countries but you know we pray for the people who are in countries where Christians are severely persecuted and we pray for their boldness and um then we have this example of scripture for this too and um And it makes me think of the Beatitudes with Christ, how he says, you know, blessed are those who are persecuted. And so I remember um, 
reading some of the through some Acts, and I was interested in how how many times the apostles got arrested in the Book of Acts, and uh, so this is kind of the beginning when they're like forbidden to you know do miracles or preach in the name of Jesus, and so you know it's going to start beginning to where they're going to do it anyway, and uh, they're going to be put in jail for it. But, uh, and, uh, it's awesome just to think of the sacrifices that the early church made for us and, uh, you know, for the kingdom of God and, uh, and the sacrifices that people continue to make today. They had everything in common. Acts 4.32, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Uh, so, you know, everything that they owned was there for everybody. And as I was reading it where it said they had one heart and one soul, I thought, you know, that's interesting. It's obviously figurative, and I don't know, know anybody who would take it literally, but... It'd be if somebody tried to argue, like, oh, you know, they have one soul, one heart. So when you become a believer, like, you no longer own your own soul or your own heart. Like, there's one heart within all believers or something. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if somebody believed that. I don't know. But it's obviously, it's figurative language. But they were all of one accord. They all... Um, they shared everything, and um, you know they ate together. They read the scriptures together. They prayed together, like we've read before. So, verse thirty-three, and Lord gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And I was thinking about that earlier, how the resurrection seems to be mentioned first a lot, and the resurrection is like the one main, you know, the biggest probably miracle and proof of. Christianity. It's what Christianity really hangs on is the resurrection. That's what it's all about. Uh, that Jesus rose from the dead. And uh, so, verse 34 says, Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were professors or possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And so, earlier it talked about them um, selling their possessions and stuff, and I was talking about them selling their homes, and it didn't specifically say home, but here it does in Acts chapter 4. They actually sold their lands and their houses. Uh, you know, that seems pretty extreme for us today to be able to do that for the cause of the church, but uh, anyway, it's amazing. Distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the, the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. All right, well, interesting. Uh, I mean, the thing, main thing that I get out of this is just how, you know, they spoke to more Jews, a lot more were saved, and They were opposed, and they were told not to say it again. They prayed to God for boldness to say it anyway, no matter what the consequences. And they they sold everything and shared uh, all their belongings with, with with each other. So actually, this is a really good chapter. You know, there's a lot there. I think. So anyway, I'm going to move on to next chapter 5, so God bless.